G'day everyone and welcome back to Osteoclast. I'm really excited today to have Suresh, the voice of the Author Bullets podcast. I was like so starstruck <laughs> to meet him and it's super exciting. And we're actually going to chat today about the flashcard program that we've been developing at Author Bullets. Um, how are you going, Suresh? I'm doing great. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for that intro. And um, I'm blushing, you can't tell, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciate it. I'm kind of like the anonymous voice of uh, the Ortho Bullets podcast. Yeah, but, finally. Uh, yeah. Revealed. Yeah, it revealed, exactly. You're, you're seeing it here first on OsteoQuest. Yeah. <laughs> and um, like your podcasts have been phenomenal. Like we, that's when I've had a lot of driving between jobs and to and from work and I haven't got time to do my topics for the day, like read my topics. If I'm doing like a study plan. Your podcasts have been like how I digest my orthopedic information. So I just load up a playlist of like the podcasts that were due for that day and I'd listen to them and then I can do the questions later on. So serious game changer. I'm really, really happy that you made them. And I know it's a lot of work because you're making one every day. And I heard now you're making more than one a day because you're also covering some medical medical stuff through MedBullet. So yeah, um, how did you get into it? So uh, it's interesting because, you know, when I was a resident, um, you know, like obviously a huge OrthoBullets fan, like, you know, so many orthopedic residents out there. And, you know, I found that one of the ways that I really learn best, especially with with the constraints of, you know, residency and how much, you know, we have to work and all of the, the driving and commuting that we have to do. And, you know, really, I found that audio is really the only medium you know, really designed for multitasking. Like you, you couldn't safely drive and read at the same time or, you know, work out and, you know, maybe you could work out and watch a video, but it's still, it's not, you, you, you kind of lose the experience a little bit. So I, you know, there was, I was listening to a ton of podcasts, like on all these commutes, but I thought, you know, it would be amazing use of time to be able to kind of like, if there was a way to upload ortho bullets into my brain, that, that was like my fantasy of like, I wish, you know, somebody could just, you know, read this to me, like narrate ortho bullets to me. So it was this, you know, idea that I had, and I, I thought eventually it would happen. And I started actually making them for myself. Like I would just try to like read through the notes and, you know, just so I could listen to it, never thinking that, you know, it would um, be anything. And I, I, I got into podcasting in, in medical school. Um, but, um, you know, when I graduated residency and, you know, still like it, it seemed like a lot of people, um, you know, uh, were still wanting this product from OrthoBullet. So I, I got introduced to Derek and we tried this uh, pilot podcast that, you know, went through a few different iterations of, you know, kind of you know, narrating uh, ortho bullets almost as like an audiobook version of ortho bullets and doing multiple choice questions and essentially building what I wish that I had um, in in residency. And, you know, um, I really didn't know how it would be received. I, you know, never really intended to be the voice of the ortho bullets, you know, podcast. And, you know, I'm glad that uh, it hasn't put you to sleep while on the road. So, uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, you know, that's kind of how it started and it, it really kind of took off and, you know, we, we are, you know, still producing, you know, daily episodes and, you know, it's one of the top 200 signed podcasts in the world, according to, to Apple. So, you know, really, um, you know, surpassed any expectations that I had for it. And I'm, I'm just so glad that it's, uh, you know, it's helping, you know, residents out there and, you know, we're continuing to, to try to make it better. So yeah, I appreciate, uh, appreciate the shout out. Uh, fan club, massive fan. So yeah, I, I just like that. It's not just a readout. It's also a bit of an interaction and you kind of summarize parts of it and talk a bit more about some parts than others and mm -hmm. uh, really, really helpful. Um, speaking of um, projects and things that we're working on, should we get into our flashcards that we're going to be introducing? Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited. So we'll, turn the tables here and I'll be interviewing you. Thanks, man. Thank you. All right. So um, nobody really teaches you how to learn. And, you know, specifically in medical school, it's interesting. We're learning all of these evidence-based, um, you know, things to treat patients, but we're never really given the evidence behind, you know, what really works in terms of learning. Like we, we all are just kind of expected at that point that, you know, you figured out how you learn and we kind of just do things intuitively, you know, what feels right. And, you know, for years, what worked for me was cramming. You know, I did that all through, you know, high school and college and it kind of got me through to the next level. And then I realized when I started medical school that 
cramming doesn't really work. And I started using a lot of, you know, things that, that have, you know, kind of lasted the test of time for some reason or the other, like highlighting, rereading, um, you know, taking notes, all of these things that I, when you look at the evidence actually are the worst things that you can possibly do. And they're much more evidence-based, um, you know, techniques that are way more effective for learning like uh, space repetition and active recall, which were things that I never even really knew about in medical school. And, you know, after, you know, joining the OrthoBullets team and kind of, you know, learning about this stuff, you know, I started to realize that I was studying completely the wrong way. And, you know, I kind of got here despite my poor study uh, techniques. But what I wanted to start out with is, you know, what are flashcards for, for those people that, may not be familiar with it and what, what's kind of the science behind them? Flashcards in their infancy were people writing questions on a piece of paper and on the reverse side having the answer. And that was a form of active recall. And like you said, that's a really good way to train your neural networks in hardwiring the pathways of pulling that information out of your brain and then out of your mouth, which is what you need to do in a lot of orthopedic exams. And the modern version of Face repetition and flashcards now uses algorithms and computer systems to deliver those flashcards. So the ones that I've experimented with and seen are Anki, which is really popular, or Anki, Nemesime, Quizlet, Brainscape, Duolingo, all of these software programs use a form of flashcard and space repetition technology. My biggest problem was it takes so long to make your own flashcards. And mm -hmm. I realized that I was actually spending heaps and heaps of time writing notes and summarizing and, you know, looking at author bullets and papers and then using Evernote or OneNote to try and write these summaries of these summaries. And it's probably all a complete waste of time. And one of my friends who's another uh, training surgeon here called Adrian Talia said, you got to spend your time revising, not accumulating notes because mm -hmm. I was probably spending 90% of my time trying to make these notes and then I'd copy and paste them into Anki and then I'd do my flashcards. But by the time I'd finished my notes that I had no time to do the revision. So the modern version is that you don't spend so much time accumulating notes and you just start testing yourself and revising and learning. And that's where this project came out of. Yeah. And, you know, flashcards have existed, you know, for, for a while now. I mean, you know, the whole idea behind space repetition is technically an older concept, right? I mean, it, it's been around for a little while. Yeah, so space repetition isn't new. It was just a way of, for example, if you had hard built flashcards, like actual paper ones, you could put a pile of the ones that were hard and then a pile of the ones that were easy. And then the next day you could do the hard ones first instead of the easy ones. Uh, spaced repetition is a way of formalizing that in, in two ways. So one is looking at when you see it next. So you start by seeing it early and each time you get it right, it gets further and further away. So you might see it tomorrow and then in a few days and then in a week and then in a month. And that just means that if you can still recall the information, it's safe to space it out further. The other thing that it does is you grade yourself and the distancing changes according to how well you rate yourself. So not only is it controlling your spacing, but it's also adjusting your spacing according to your competence. And that's the real intelligence of it. And so a lot of other systems use SuperMemo2, which is an algorithm to dictate that spacing. But there's also settings that you can modify to customize it to your own experience. And that's what we've introduced into Orthoboards with Derek Moore, who's a big believer in introducing this technology, as well as their software development team. And we've also had Ben Sharare, who's been amazing, just pumped out like thousands of cards over the last couple mm -hmm. of months to get this off the ground. So we've got a big team putting this together and we're really excited to release it. Yeah, no, it, it's really been a tremendous uh, team effort. Obviously, a, a lot of people were, were involved in, you know, really... Um, executing the, this vision and it's um, it, it's amazing. Um, so I'm interested in learning about how you kind of got involved in this. Like you know, kind of how you know how did you uh, you know how were you able to kind of jump on this team and you know what was uh, what was that process like? It was fairly uh, serendipitous in that I had a Zoom with the Orthobullet support staff because I was having trouble using the conferencing system. I want to learn how to use it better to run study groups for some of my friends in Victoria and Australia. And Derek Moore happened to jump on and just start asking some questions and saying, you know, how do you guys study? What do you guys do? And I started talking to him about flashcards and Anki that I was doing. And 
he, he said, what you're doing sounds crazy. Like he said, just to get this right, you're copying author bullets, writing your own summary, and then putting your summary into Anki. Like that sounds crazy labor intensive. And I was like, you know what, you're right. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he said, can you, can you join our team and help us put this technology into author bullets so that you could use our site to create your flashcards or even use flashcards that our site creates for you. And I got really excited and pretty much the next day I stopped writing notes. And I was like, if this is going to be possible online, then what I'm doing now is a complete waste of my time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got uh, put on board as a sort of consultant to help out with the team and help develop it and test it and test the algorithm and also test the interface. And what I'm big on is efficiency of your rev- reviews. That's been a big part of what I've been involved in is helping create shortcuts using your keyboard so that you can really quickly flick through your reviews and make it really time efficient without even touching your mouse. So you can hit things like enter to flip the card. You can hit numbers like one through to five to pick different responses and left and right to flip through cards. So you hardly even have to touch the mouse and you can see quite a lot of cards quite quickly. Amazing. So, um, you know, I, you touched on it a little bit, but, you know, obviously, you know, we, we have these other, um, you know, popular uh, flashcard softwares out there, like you mentioned, you know, Anki, which is like very popular amongst medical students, Quizlet, things like that. You know, how is OrthoBullets different? What, what are these OrthoBullets cards all about? And, you know, what's the advantage of using them versus, you know, an Anki or, or a Quizlet or some of these other things? So the, the big game changer is the integration with the rest of the sites. So Anki and Quizlet and all those programs sit on their own and you're kind of putting information in, typing it. And once you've made the card, the card doesn't update and the information doesn't update. And eventually that card deck will be obsolete as the medical field changes and research develops and protocols and evidence develops. The beauty of this is that it's completely integrated into everything else that OrthoBullets has. So you're looking at your notes and highlights, for example, if you highlight something on the card, it's going to change what it looks like on your page. And if you write a note next to a line on the page, it's going to pop up in your in your card and your progress is tracked while you learn the cards and you can see an indicator of that on the topic page. So there's actually going to be a line on the right where you can see which ones you've covered so far in terms of the bullets that you studied as cards and how well you've done on them. So there's going to be a color gradient on the cards. And you can build it in as part of your Ancaneus platform where you're looking at your reviews per day. So it's actually just going to be really easily built into your reviews for the day. And I think the strength of this is going to be something like when you do a study plan, like I did the core curriculum when I was preparing for uh, my exam. And I found that so helpful to have small bite-sized pieces of information delivered each day. And if that's got cards in there as well, then that's going to be a really effective way of just not only reading the topic, but also quickly testing my recall. And then that goes into my algorithm and it's going to come up over the next few months spread out in the appropriate way to make sure that I remember that topic that I read that day. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, you know, how, how can I start using that, uh, you know, right, right now? Like, you know, how, is there, is there a way to customize these cards or are you just using cards that, um, you know, OrthoBullets has already created for you or, or can you do both? There's, there's actually quite a few options and that's why it's going to be quite customizable to your study technique and your own personal opinion on how you want to learn. I think the common one will be if you're just looking a topic up that you saw that day, for example, you saw a distal radius fracture, you want to quickly review it. You can go to the topic page. And as long as you're signed in at the very bottom, you can go to the flashcards. And as you click through them, they will be put into your algorithm. So you can quickly read the topic, test yourself on what you recall. So that's that active recall, which is strengthening your neural networks. And then the next day, the ones that you got really wrong, are going to pop back up in your daily reviews and all of a sudden they're in your algorithm and you're going to keep that information, I guess, down pat. The other ways you can do it, so you can look at a topic and say, look, one of those bullets doesn't have a flashcard, but I'm really interested in learning that answer. You can actually create your own flashcards for free and all it is is a click of a button. You click on one of the bullets, it auto-populates the backside of the card with that content and you just write the question. And all of a sudden you've got your own personal cards that you can customize as well. There are a couple of other things. So some people are focused on exams and they want to prepare uh, for particular exams. They can do card decks. So Ben Sharara has been instrumental in preparing these card decks with high yield cards and they're arranged by topic. You can find them under the enter card decks area of the author bullets card, which is along the top menu. And you can actually do a pre-made deck with all these questions that people have already made from the author bullets team. And all of a sudden you've got this way to quickly revise a whole content. So you can study trauma or you can study spine or you can study path. 
I think the last way, that, and this is what I would do if I had my time again, I was doing the core curriculum starting now, is you can do them as you cover the topics in a study plan. I think that's going to be another really effective way of using them. Hmm. Yeah, no, I, I I could see advantages to to both of those. Obviously, I mean, I, I think there probably is some advantage to making your own cards as well. Um, you know, and in, in, in kind of just interacting with the material a little bit, you know, more, and you know, kind of getting that creative process and in kind of like synthesizing these, these connections. But then at the same time, the amount of time that it saves you just from being able to pull right from the ortho bullets, you know, topics. Um, and then actually having cards, you know, that were, you know, hand curated by by our authors so that you know what's important and what a good card looks like to be able to have both options, I think is incredible. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's really important. And like I said before, what we're trying to do is minimize the time you spent curating and accumulating things and writing cards and just get straight into revising and learning and testing yourself because that's where the really high yield process of learning comes from. Yeah. And what I should have mentioned before is you can also make your own card decks. So you can actually use filters and to create card deck and you can pick out all the cards that you got wrong, for example, and just make a quick deck to revise. Or you can pick out all the cards that you've created or all the cards that are from a particular topic and make your own customized decks to study as well. So there's multiple ways you can interact with the cards on author bullets. Awesome. And, um, you know, just kind of going, you know, into the evidence a little bit, you know, around, you know, space repetition and, and active recall, you know, there, there's this thing, um, ironically, that I forget exactly what it means called the forgetting curve. Um, can you explain what the forgetting curve is and how it relates to, to what, what we're talking about here? Yeah, so the forgetting curve is this concept that once you're exposed to some information, there's decay of your ability to recall it or there's retention decay. And so you can imagine the day after you might remember it a bit like 80% and then a couple of days later it might be 60%. And eventually if you don't expose yourself to it again for a very long time, it'd be hard to remember it. And so the way that cards are supposed to interact with this forgetting curve is that it bumps up your recall at the right time. So perhaps the next day if it was a difficult card and if you don't remember it, you relearn it and take yourself back up to knowing it. Again, the decay happens afterwards, but you've seen it twice now. So the decay curve is slightly less of less aggressive. So perhaps you're more likely to remember for a little bit longer. And again, that's what the spacing does. So it puts it out a few days later, right at the, at the right time when we think we're going to be forgetting it and bumps it back up and you learn it again. Now you've seen it three times, the decay curve is less aggressive and so on. It was quoted to be, originated from Ebbinghaus many years ago. It's mm -hmm. a cognitive psychology sort of concept. But I think it's important to understand because if you just do the cards as one-offs, they're probably not going to be very effective. So you really got to do the cards, jump on your Ankeneus area or the cards Ankeneus under the cards banner and do the cards that are due that day so that the ones you got wrong yesterday aren't forgotten. Otherwise, it's going to be the same as just reading the topic and not looking at it again and forgetting it. Oh, that's, yeah. No, that's that's genius. It's like, yeah, you're you're recalling the information at precisely the time that you would forget it along this like predictable curve that, you know, human beings will naturally, you know, forget information. Um, exactly. And, and yeah. my curve might look different to your curve. Right. And so I might not remember things as well as you and it might take me a shorter amount of time to forget it. So that's where the customizability that we've built into the program is really, really helpful. So on your settings for cards, you can pick what your options are the first time you see a card. So if I'm doing really badly, I might say next day, if I hit option one, which is really hard and maybe, or even the same day and next day for option two, and I can customize it so that option three and four, which is sort of fair or easy or mastered is seven days or two weeks, depending on how I feel I'm interacting with the content. And if I'm doing lots of reviews and I'm finding the spacing is too long and I'm actually forgetting the cards by the time they're coming back, I can also change the frequency with which I see cards and that's just an easy to use slide bar. And so for example, if I feel like I'm getting hits wrong, I can just decrease the frequency slightly. It means I've got to see more cards, but I'm seeing them at the right time before I forget them. Or if they're really easy, I can extend the frequency out a bit longer so that I have less cards to review and I'm more efficient with my time. Yeah, no, I love it. Um, and you know, this, uh, I know right now is technically in a, in, in a beta version, but, um, you know, we're going to be rolling out the, the full version soon. And then also, um, you know, what I'm really excited about is for it to, 
um, come onto the app. Uh, I think that's gonna, that's going to be out, you know, a few weeks from the time of this uh, recording. So, you know, with, you know, with that, um, you know, a functionality to be able to, to do it on your phone, are there times that, you know, you found yourself in, in, in the past when you used other, you know, platforms like it would, uh, that you were doing cards, like, you know, were, were there specific times in your day that you would allocate to it? Or was it just any time, you know, if you if you had to wait on a long line or a queue, like you, know, you just you know, start doing cards or, you know, are there are there certain times that are better than others to, you know, do these cards or, you know, um, is it kind of just whenever you remember to do it? I think it's a good point. I hardly ever used the computer version of Anki when I was using Anki. Mm -hmm. So it was almost always on my phone. And the beauty of it is you have this process where you just pick up your phone and within five minutes, you can be doing the right things at the right time and revising them compared to going home, opening up the computer, opening up the books, opening up your summaries, starting to write notes. It's a really long startup process. You can only do it a couple, once a day, maybe twice. Uh, so it's much less efficient. So this whole thing that Derek calls stackable learning just bite-sized pieces that you can pick up and do any time. So you can be in the bathroom, you can be waiting between cases, it can be just after you wake up. I think if you make a habit, I try to do maybe half an hour before I go to work and that way it's done for the day and I've made some efforts and then if any breaks that I have during the day, I can just top that up and even just before bed. If you make a habit of doing blocks of it each day, I think that's probably the most effective way so that at least you're getting something done and you're not delaying these reviews till later when you might forget it and it will be less effective. Yeah. Now you mentioned the, um, you know, the, like the mobile version of like Anki and things like that. Um, when I remember using it, I, I think at least for, for iOS, it, it did cost some, um, to, to, to purchase that. Um, does Orthobullets flashcards, is that, does that cost anything or, you know, what's, what's the, you know, what's the damage? So the big thing is that we want this software to be free and accessible to everyone. So, you don't even have to have a peak or a pass or like a premium paid account to access this. All you have to do is register for a free author bullets account and you'll have access to this immediately, including all the software algorithm that's behind it and being built to support it. If you are using the phone, it's all going to be integrated into the one app. So you can do the card and even in the question, you can actually click on the topic and it's going to take you back to the topic, even to just down to the specific line that you were tested on. So you can quickly review it in the app at the same time. Same happens on the computer. When you're clicking through cards, you can click quickly to the question topic and review it. It's going to be all the one app, which is the same free author bullets app. So it's going to be really accessible and hopefully promote this as a learning opportunity for people worldwide. I love it. Um, this is amazing. Um, how, I, you know, I imagine that there's a little bit of a learning curve, um, you know, in, in getting started with this and kind of all of like, you know, kind of the, the, the different settings, you know, potentially to, to customize this, you know, for, you know, for your liking and, you know, to, to make it the most uh, efficient um, experience for you. How do you, uh, how would I find out more about, um, you know, how to use this, this really game changing feature um, from what I'm hearing? Yeah, good question. So I think it's going to be good to have some instructions about how to use it. Obviously, listening to this podcast is a bit helpful, but doing something like a screen share tutorial is really good. So we've created a whole bunch of how to, how to use tutorials, and these are going to be up on the website. If you click on the cards banner, which is along the top menu, there's going to be a, a, an option there to read more and learn more about it, where we're going to host these tutorial videos. There's going to be written instructions about how to use it, and we'll be sharing tips and tricks like the keyboard shortcuts and um, other features that you might want to just quickly freshen up on and figure out how to use. You can also contact the Author Bullets team if you have issues. There's a support uh, contact email that you can ask for help if you're stuck and also ask your colleagues. There's any people using this um, everywhere and people will, I think, identify themselves sort of expert users as they become more comfortable with it and hopefully they can spread the word and share their uh, experience of it too. Awesome. Yeah. And we'll, we'll have all of those uh, resources linked up in the show notes of the podcast. Um, I think we covered a lot of ground. Is there any, any, anything else you want to end on? Um, any advice uh, for people, any parting words? I think just jump on this opportunity. It's, it's the most modern technology it's integrated. And I think if there's one key thing that I took from this whole process is that writing my own notes wasn't that essential to my learning. And I think there's a lot of people in medical school who 
like are religious about their notes and that's like their whole you know essence of being and they couldn't imagine dropping it and i was like that until last year when i started this project so if i could impart one thing and accepting that people study differently and different people have different techniques of learning i think if we could encourage some people to stop writing their own volumes of notes it, which is probably less effective for most people and just jump on these resources like author bullets where you can read you can highlight you can make notes you can even upload pdfs on the side of the page that are your personal sort of host um, inf of information and then you can quickly revise and you don't have to spend time making flashcards you don't have to spend time summarizing and copying and transferring between data systems uh, just make use of it it's free and it's out there and it's going to be really effective awesome yeah no this is incredible and you know um i know the oite um in the states at least our you know orthopedic in training exam um you know is coming up and you know this is a, a golden opportunity to kind of test drive these uh these cards and we have these you know pre-made high yield decks um you know that uh, i i wish that i had before i was taking my uh in training exam so um, just like you said, um, you know, uh, this is a great time to jump on this opportunity and these cards are just going to get better and better. Um, and yeah, we'd appreciate any feedback from, from the listeners on, you know, what you think, um, you know, you can find us on social media or you can send us uh, a message to this podcast or, you know, email us at info at orthobullets.com. Um, so I just want to thank you, Anton, Dr. Lambers for all your hard work on this, you know, amazing product. And, you know, we're, uh, looking forward to seeing how how it evolves and you know how it really changes the orthopedic education game thanks for having me appreciate it